Christiane, thank you so much for finding the time today and for coming on. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So we'll talk today about cortisol levels in young children. And this is something you've been working on. To start us off, can you tell us what cortisol is and why we need to study it in young children? Yeah, so uh, cortisol is a steroid hormone, which is released by the adrenal glands. And cortisol has many functions. And one of the main functions is that it prepares the body to cope with stressors. And it does so by increasing blood pressure, but also by increasing circulating levels of glucose in the bloodstream. And this provides the body with sufficient energy. But uh, yeah, the cortisol is often called the stress hormone, but that's a bit misleading because there are actually many other functions that cortisol has. So it's, for instance, involved in metabolism, but also uh, in regulating the sleep-wake cycle and in memory formation. And these are already sufficient reasons why to also study this in young children. But uh, one of the main uh, reasons why I'm interested in uh, cortisol in early childhood is because uh, we know that chronic stress can alter cortisol levels. And this does not only apply to adults, but it also does so uh, for young children. And we can ask adults, how stressed are you? But that's more difficult uh, to ask to young children. So we actually need an objective measure yeah, for stress activation. And what we also know from previous studies is that uh, alterations in cortisol levels, which can be either to high levels or having to low levels, these are implied in various psychiatric disorders, for instance, in major depression. So that means that uh, having altered cortisol levels early on uh, may be a risk factor for developing later mental health problems. And you also mentioned the uh, sleep-wake cycle there. So cortisol mm -hmm. levels change over the day. Can you tell us about how they uh, change over the day? Yeah, so uh, cortisol is not only released during stress, but uh, as you mentioned, they are also released constantly over the day and they follow a circadian pattern. And this pattern is characterized by high levels in the morning and they reach a peak about 30 minutes after wake up. And then there's a sharp decline over the next hour or two, and then a more gradual decline over the rest of the day. So this and is the pattern that is observed in most of the adults. And what can you talk also about the other factors or the factors that affect cortisol levels? So on the one hand, uh, food intake, um, but then there's also sleep. And um, what are also the other factors that actually affect cortisol levels? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned two important uh, factors that have short-term effects on cortisol levels. So for instance, food intake leads to high peaks in cortisol for a short duration, whereas naps can lower cortisol levels. And then uh, we've already talked about stress. So there are daily hassles that can lead to cortisol increases. But uh, yeah, there are many other factors. And what I found quite interesting is that for young children, for instance, daycare can even affect cortisol levels. So I, I've told you before that cortisol levels decrease over the day, but studies have actually found that during daycare, uh, there's an increase in cortisol levels from mid morning to afternoon. So it's actually the opposite pattern. And yeah, I think that's uh, really interesting and shows that cortisol is quite a sensitive hormone. And now, can you tell us about the main findings of your recent research? Um, you looked at the cortisol levels in, in toddlers. Uh, can you tell us more about that? If we want to measure cortisol, uh, we need a good measure. And in terms of research, that means the measure should be reliable. So if we measure it on multiple days, the cortisol levels should be quite similar. And uh, we've talked about all these factors that influence cortisol levels and that makes it quite difficult to get a reliable estimate of cortisol because particularly for young children, there are multiple feeding moments, but they also nap once or twice during the day. So our idea was uh, to conduct a study in which we compared different times of day uh, at which we asked parents uh, to take a saliva sample from their toddler. And uh, from the saliva samples, we analyze cortisol. And just as a side note, cortisol can also be analyzed from hair samples and from 
fingernails, blood, and there are so many options, but uh, salivary cortisol gives us an idea of the momentary cortisol concentration. And parents had to take five samples per day on two days. And what we found was uh, that uh, samples taken between 30 and 80 minutes after wake up and also bedtime samples were more similar across both days than samples taken directly after wake up in the noon and in the afternoon. So these times may be most suitable to measure cortisol in early childhood. Thank you. So now we got that. Are there any implications or recommendations from your research for practitioners as well as parents and caregivers of young children? Yeah, I would say that uh, if uh, in clinical plaque practice, uh, cortisol levels are measured, then it's important to interpret these with caution. So uh, if uh, too high or too low cortisol levels are detected, it would be wise to uh, just repeat sampling to see whether there's really an alteration or uh, whether this was a chance finding. Okay, thank you. So how do you see the results of this study influencing cortisol measurement protocols in young children in future research? This uh, study was primarily conducted uh, for research purposes, and we hope that uh, researchers who struggle with choosing good sampling time points will adopt the times that uh, we found most reliable in our study, which means the early morning and the bedtime sample. And I also would like to stress that uh, our sample size was quite small. So we had 19 families included. This is a good start, but uh, definitely more research is needed in this field, and this should be based on larger samples. And actually, such research has already happened in school-aged children, also in adolescents and adults, but not uh, in the youngest ones. And this is important because if we want to conduct good studies, meaningful studies, we need good measures. Great, Christiana, thank you so much for sharing all these insights from your work. And uh, yeah, best of luck with your further studies. Thank you. Thanks.